Good afternoon, everybody. We'll call the meeting back to order. I believe we're on agenda item 4.31. Good afternoon, Council. Matt from Administration here to present the February Community and Development Services Report. Just some salient points for Council's information. We continue with community services on tree, tree replacement public engagement. So we're hoping to get that what we heard report for Clooney back uh, next or this month rather in March uh, for Council's information. With economic development, a couple of exciting notes. The signage um, uh, project for next level, we have staked out the first phase on Highway 1 and other major corridors. So work will be uh, starting in the spring with respect to erecting and taking down the existing signs um, for the county. Uh, we continue to improve our digital um, uh, kind of footprint with respect to uh, announcements, LinkedIn, social media and the rest for economic development. And of course, um, the hydrogen industry expert RFP work continues on that and we hope to uh, get that situated and sorted in the month of March. Statistics for fire and emergency services are included in the report. Report. Planning and development, one note as well in addition to the statistics on page 65 and 66 is the municipal development plan. We're looking to get that circulated across the county with respect to amendments. So if the steering committee, which is council, has any uh, amendments or kind of notes, please uh, circulate those to myself and we will incorporate those into the municipal development plan for circulation. And that it concludes the report. I'm available for questions. Thank you. Any questions for Community and Development Services? I'm just curious about the explosion in West uh, Wheatland it's on the... Uh... Um, through the Reeve explosion, sorry. Sorry, I'm just... I oh, for fire? Up on my, oh, uh, but to, yeah, yeah, I'll defer to Four our goals. manager of fire and emergency. If you wouldn't mind just coming to the yeah. microphone. Thank you so much. Yeah, so the kill did come in as an explosion. Uh, however, it was uh, actually a burn permit. So, oh. but the way the way they lit it up, it was it was very quick. It was a lot of black smoke. So, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> My apologies. I did, I thought explosion and development. I wasn't. Oh, oh. <laughs> and I, I couldn't find it on the. Yeah, it's not uh, not on the right page. Sorry. Any other questions? If not, a motion to accept his information. Also move. Councillor Baker. Uh, any questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. We move to 4.32, True Mutual Aid Agreements Review and Update. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Council. I will be fairly brief here as well. Um, this is mainly just an update uh, for Council uh, on the status of our mutual aid agreements. So there's a chart attached, uh, you can see, so uh, column one is South Central Mutual Aid Agreement. So what that is, that's basically an emergency <laughs> management agreement uh, between uh, numerous partners. And then our fire mutual aid agreements are on the right. So I'll just go through the list. Um, Town of Strathmore, we have one. Uh, Vulcan County, we have one. Foothills County, we do not. Rocky View County, we do. Nehill County, we do not, but I'm in uh, conversations with them on a draft currently. Starland County, we do not. Special areas, we do, but it's very outdated. Um, the County of Newell, uh, we do not. Town of Drumheller, we do not. City of Chestmere, we do not. And Six Sicca Nation, we're in a draft. So um, essentially, uh, the ask is that Council direct administration to work with Six Sicca Nation, Vulcan County, Foothills County, Rock Review County, Nehill County, Starland County, special areas, County of Newell, Town of Strathmore, Town of Drumheller, and the City of Chestmere to develop and update mutual aid agreements and bring back an update um, to Council for review and approval. So. This is really just a housekeeping item. Um, it's necessary, it's needed um, for fire services, for efficient uh, operations. Um, the intent is to have a no fee for service, so it would be a true mutual aid agreement. Um, it's very, very minimal use uh, of mutual aid in the county. We, we basically, uh, we depend on our own resources. Um, however, there is, there is times, uh, Six Sicca uh, would be one that we would use more often. Uh, the town of Strathmore, we work with them more often. Um, Drumheller uh, and Dallum work closely together. Um, and of course, the Langdon Fire Hall is probably the, the fire hall that we would use uh, most often as well in Rocky View. So um, the intent is no fee for service. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, scratch our back, scratch, scratch your back sort of situation. 
situation. That's the intent uh, that I want to enter the agreements into. So basically just want your permission to move forward in that direction. Thank you. Any questions? Councillor Kester. Um, Councillor Kester, if you can turn your microphone on, please. Is there a need or to include the three villages? Is no, I, I don't think there. There's a need for that. This would be a county through, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, agreement through mutual a mutual aid agreement through the county, um, not the villages themselves. Um, but obviously, uh, we would keep them in the loop through fire services that if there was a request, um, they'll be aware of of the mutual aid agreements that we're working on. But I think it's more a little. A little kind of broader than than that, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I just have I just have one in regards to to Langdon Fire Hall. Is that a staffed fire hall? No, that is a volunteer fire hall. All volunteer. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I'll make the motion that Council direct administration to work with Siksika Nation, Vulcan County, Foothills County, Rocky View County, Neho County, Starland County, special areas. County of Newell, Town of Strathmore, Town of Drumheller, and City of Chestermere to develop and update mutual <laughs> agreements and bring back an update to Council for a review and approval, period, dot, end of discussion. Deputy Reeve Clausen has moved. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Not off when you read that. Run out of air. We'll move to 4.41. Transportation and Agriculture Report. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, Brad Bullock reporting, uh, presenting the Transportation and Agriculture Team Report for February. Um, so on page 74 of the agenda, uh, starting with capital projects, um, the first one on that page uh, highlighted is the uh, bypass installation for in Gleeshan for the uh, for the water plant. So that uh, project is ongoing, uh, has had some delays. Um, so current uh, completion is anticipated for end of March. Just waiting for some pumps um, to arrive and get installed on that one. On the next page, uh, a couple bridge files uh, that are in progress. Um, one completed bridge file uh, 09387, and um, the other one nearing completion when the report was made. On to the next project with operations. So the speed limit signs um, along Township 232 were installed. Um, per council's uh, direction, changing that speed limit from 100 kilometers per hour to 80. Also uh, in Cars Land at uh, the railway crossing per council resolution, the speed limit uh, signs were installed there, changing the speed limit to 40 kilometers per hour. A um, couple of just interesting operational statistics. Uh, so road graveling hauled in 2021 um, was about 108,000 tons. Um, that covered about uh, 670 miles and uh, road reclamation included uh, 40 and a half miles um, of recrown and 12 miles of dirt road. Um, operations, our operations staff are, are continuing to support um, the utility operations of Gleeson and Rosebud. Rosebud supporting the WRC uh, while they uh, bring on additional staff. Um, on the facilities, uh, ongoing um, preparation and, and quotations uh, for capital projects. And uh, a couple other interesting statistics for waste and recycling. 2021 transfer sites logged uh, almost 75,000 vehicles. Uh, Wheatland West having 40% of the traffic. Um, also, transfer sites combined took in uh, about a little over 15 and a half thousand kilograms of unused paint to be disposed of at the Drumheller landfill. Uh, under the land report, so this is the table, uh, page 77, that we see in terms of Murfield lot sales. We have, as Council is aware, had a significant uptick in sales. Um, so this is the current uh, view of, of those sales. Obviously, this is changing 
um, rapidly right now, so this table may not represent where we're at today, but uh, should be approximate. And uh, lastly, the agriculture environment uh, report. So some of the activities listed there, as well as at the bottom of the page, some upcoming events, the Alberta Farmer Pesticide Applicator Certificate, certificate and Recertification. Um, so this will be held at the Wheatland County Administration Office on March 9th. Um, as well, a drone school um, will be held at the Standard Community Hall uh, March 28th and 29th. Um, further to the report are the uh, more detailed tables of all of the activities, capital projects uh, for the year, as well as uh, ongoing or current uh, operational and uh, ASB activities. And that concludes my report. If uh, there's any questions, uh, we're here. Thank you. Any questions for transportation and agriculture? Deputy Reef Clausen, you had raised a concern about the lack of lots in Muirfield in a previous conversation that we had. Yes, actually, thank you for reminding me. So I'm wondering if uh, I talked to Matt briefly about this too, if we can maybe get staff to look and see if we want to, uh, where council wants to go with this, if we want to look at investing some money and putting some more infrastructure in to have more lots for sale or put a package together and possibly have a developer look at it or whatnot. I can put a motion to direct administration to look into that. I don't know the exact verbiage. I'm sure Matt can put words in my mouth. <laughs> so um, with respect to the development pressure at Muirfield that we, we know and that uh, GM Bullock has pointed out, um, you know, we are anticipating more development pressure and you are right, we are at a trigger point or a tipping point rather where we have an additional phase that doesn't have the infrastructure, i.e. roads, etc., cetera, um, going to it um, in terms of having that land developer aspect that the county is in right now, that's the position we are in. So ultimately we are looking at that as it's an interdivisional kind of effort right now um, to look at ways and look at kind of decisions that council needs to make in the near not too distant future so if you were to put a motion on the floor with respect to this you could um, direct that administration um, review uh, the development pressures in the lakes of Muirfield and bring back a report of options for council to consider Yeah, put the so moved. So moved. <laughs> that works. <laughs> I had a question. Is the is the piping in the ground at these at the next development level? I think there's some and some not. I think it's very important that the staff will review that and see what needs to be done and whether it's done to capacity that is needed right, too. Right. right? So what, okay. that would be the first part of it, and there'll be cost associated. So that'll with be that. included in that. It would explore all infrastructure um, improvements that would be needed to have service lots so available for sale. My idea would be come, they'd come back to us with, this is what it's going to cost to produce this next phase. Do we want to proceed with it as council? Do we want to, you know, yeah. and then, because it's nice that the development is progressing now, we have interest there. So, you know, it takes a while to get that momentum going, so. And just to note, Madam Reeve, through you to Council, um, I think it's important as well to provide options should Council choose to go in another direction. There are multiple directions and avenues that us as administration are exploring, so those, those should be included as well. Okay. I support the motion. I think it is important that we continue, um, regardless of which direction or I don't, I don't even know what we're contemplating, but um, just the economies of scale that we can find as it builds out further. Um, it just makes it easier to finish that wastewater servicing and that type of thing. And, and it is beneficial to the county as a whole as well if we can target some of the residential development into communities. And of course that can help minimize that fragmentation of egg land as well. So I think there's direct and indirect benefits. Um, both to the community members, but also to the county as a whole by looking at that. So fully support that. And I know it's like a part-time job signing all the sale agreements and the amendments and uh, Brian and I get to do it 
almost daily right now. And it's exciting though, because it's a, there's a huge demand um, in the community and I think that's, it's a really exciting time. So it's good to fully support. When you, when staff administration does this, they will undertake to, um, to make sure there's, cause there's gotta be a tipping point on haulage, right? Like on waste haulage, there's gotta be a tipping point where, oh no, we gotta bring on another, cause you know how much I love hiring employees, you know? So, so as long as administration gives us all the, all the, the options, like, and I would really like him to look at the option of, you know, maybe, you know, subbing this out, like getting a developer in here for, you know, like just if we can get that all worked out that I'm 100% behind this. And I do believe uh, staff are still looking into the solution for Mirfield as well for permanent wastewater solution at the same time. So, and I think all this work, regardless, um, it's not, it's good work to have because uh, you'll know the values of what it takes to t continue that development since someone come in the door and want to buy it from us or whatever, at least we'll have that mm -hmm. plan in place. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Also looking for a motion to accept the transportation and agriculture report as information. Also move. Councillor LaPriest. Uh, any questions or discussion? Councillor Larson. Just uh, probably a question for this. The farmer pesticide and applicator certificate. Oh, how many? Oh, uh, Councillor Larson, can oh. you turn your microphone on, please? Yeah. Thank you. Let me start over again. This is probably for Russ. Just with the farmer uh, pesticide and applicator certificate and recertification, I know it's limited to 25 people. Do we know, like, are we getting close or? Uh, afternoon, Russ, with administration. Um, through the chair, actually, uh, we don't have anybody registered at the moment that I'm aware of. We did have, we tried to host one last year and we had the same issue. So. Um, Registration, registration deadlines on Monday for it. So, and we tend to have people register last minute for same things. So, hopefully, it it does go. Well, that was what I was looking for because I think we should probably get, as councillors, we should try and get the news out to our our ratepayers because this is, I mean, at a hundred dollars, that's a that's a pretty cheap thing. And if you're just recertifying, I think it's even cheaper. And there's no exam. Yeah, sixty dollars. So we should let people know because after five years that. Um, application certificate expires so yeah excellent point while you're there I have one more question for you I've had a question around strict nine and I think I know the answer but I know there was some appeals or some advocacy to extend sales based on the supply chain challenges um, I think mainly out of India any news on that yeah so there hasn't been any news on that um, Friday is was the last day to sell the product if we had it available, which we don't. So, um, so no, it doesn't look hopeful for um, for anything moving forward. So, in the last county connector, we did have an article kind of outlining uh, outlining some options for producers. Um, but yeah, so it's, it, it doesn't look good. Um, last day for use for producers that do have it will be March fourth of next year. So. Thank you. That, I assumed that was that, but I was hoping I'd miss some good news. So thank you. Any other questions? All in favor of accepting the reporter's information? Motion is carried. Move to 4.42, Highway 840 Curves Assessment. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, Brad Bullock presenting. Uh, so this is a follow-up report to uh, previous Council Resolution 2111-24, uh, where Council directed administration to investigate the curves on Highway 840. Um, so uh, administration did go and visit uh, that area and drove it and uh, made the decision that uh, uh, more investigation would be helpful. Um, as part of that, and so uh, there was a, an assessment report that uh, administration um, uh, got from McElhaney Consulting. Um, so in that report or in that investigation, uh, McElhaney completed a ball bank analysis, um, reviewed 
guardrail warrants, uh, signage, uh, cross-section measurements, and side slope observations. Uh, they also did a, a desktop study, um, existing traffic condition, uh, horizontal geometry of curves against the AT guidelines, and a review of the historic uh, uh, collision data for, for the area. And uh, that data went up to, I believe, 2018, so the, the recent years weren't on there. but. Um, the roadway is a two-lane divided, undivided roadway. Um, the speed is 100 kilometers per hour um, with uh, advisory speeds on the two curves. And um, traffic volumes for that road segment are about 420 vehicles per day. Um, so the report did come back with some uh, noted uh, observations for the road. So one, the, uh, the advisory speed for curve one, which would be the south curve, um, is at 75 kilometers per hour, um, which is against AT guidelines who say that this should be in multiples of 10. So that was one recommendation to adjust that. Um, the horizontal geometry review uh, for curve two identified a, a safety issue uh, in terms of that curve being a compound curve, which means that the radius or the curve of it changes um, you know, partway through the curve. And so if you're traveling south to north, if you're going around that curve, right when you get to the end of the curve, you actually have to turn um, sharper in order to get around that get around that curve. So that could be um, throw drivers off and uh, an unexpected change in, in curve radius there. Um, also, uh, the third point, so on page 90 at the top of the page, um, the cross-sectional me measurements, the shoulder widths along the study don't meet the required half meter. Um, the northbound side slope for a section within curve two is steeper than three to one, which doesn't meet the standards when evaluated against the design side. And so those side slopes also, if they get too steep, um, if, a, if a vehicle does go off-road, it can increase the risk of, of rollover. Um, so the report suggested uh, a couple of different options for repairing. So one, short-term improvements that could be done, and then some potential long-term improvements as well. So the short-term improvements, one, as was already mentioned, uh, changing the 75-kilometer advisory speed to 70, just to be consistent with AT guidelines. Um, side slope improvements also on curve two um, to get it to the one and three uh, slope. Uh, could be uh, an improvement that um, isn't very uh, um, difficult to um, to do, uh, as well as on that curve too, where the radius does uh, decrease suddenly, to potentially put some signage up there, just some Chevron signage to warn drivers of that. Uh, long term. Uh, improvements would be more of a reconstruction of the curve, so fixing the compound curve on curve two, um, as well as widening of the shoulders, essentially widening of the road on curve two are some of the recommendations um, that McElhaney gave. Now this road is a highway, and so it's under the jurisdiction of Alberta Transportation, and so we're providing this report to Council for information only. Any questions? So side slope improvements would just be bringing dirt in to make it flatter. Yeah. Yeah, that's likely what it would look like for that uh, for that location. What's Chevron line must like sign It's like those side Chevron signs that you see. They're orange ones, and with the black um, side. Up there in our wheat is Chevrons. <laughs> yeah. And so if you just put it right, sort of where that compound curve is coming up, or they're suggesting just to warn drivers that, hey, there's a kind of a hazard or an increase in the curve uh, or decrease in the curve radius. That curve can be tricky, especially after a little bit of snow on it. Yeah. Deputy <laughs> 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 so, oh, We don't maintain this road, do we? No. Correct. This is all provincial? Yeah. Okay. So we paid for a report that they won't even look at it, probably. I think in terms of process, we have a recommendation to accept, but I think we could accept and also uh, direct administration to forward to Alberta Transportation if there was council direction and 
then we could follow that up as well when we meet with AT. I'm sure we could sneak that yeah. onto our agenda. Because it had an overlay, what, two years ago? Can we send Alberta government the, the bill? Longer than that. Is that? Yeah. Good luck. You can send, send it. it. I, I move that we add the bill to the, the copy of the report, the cost of the report to the as an invoice into the letter we send. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, what's going to hurt? But maybe we should do two motions. <laughs> so can I make one? I think, are you moving? Well, no, I think, okay. yeah. Okay. I mean. So, so I'd like to move the council accept the Highway 40 and Township Road 262 curve safety assessment report as information and also forward this report on to uh, Alberta Transportation with the recommendation that they address the issue. Then I think you can do yours after we pass this. Yeah, and then I'll make a motion once that motion is, is yep. done. Any questions or discussion regarding the motion? All in favor? Motion is carried. And I'll move that we include an invoice for the study to be in, to attached to the letter to the Alberta government, just so that they realize that this is their job, not ours, and uh, it's it's unsafe and uh, it should be brought to their attention, so. I would just, if you consider it a friendly amendment, we could just add to that it's, while it's a provincial road, it's our ratepayers that are using this road quite often, which is why we, you know, the reason for doing the study, listen, it's your problem, but it's our people that are right. at risk. Yeah. yeah. Just well, to, yeah. I mean, I think we have a snowball's chance in a very hot place of having it approved, but I, I agree with you that we should do it. If I may, through the Reeve, um, my understanding through our uh, operations manager, this road, um, as it sits, used to belong to the county and was turned over in its current state to Alberta Transportation, just as a, a, a point, that uh, a salient point. That we built it? Yeah. We'll, we'll <laughs> deny that. <though>. <laughs> Duly noted. Brad, can you tell us what the cost of the study was? Um, about six thousand. Enough to get their attention. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions or discussion? Mm. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. It's <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that forward. We appreciate it. We'll move to five point one. We have a request regarding hosting the 2024 Alberta Winter Summer Games. Village of Rocky Ford correspondence regarding the funding agreement with the villages and correspondence regarding an environmental impact assessment. And that's regarding development in Nihil County, the Badlands Motorsport Resort. Any questions or discussion? What are we, sorry, what are we, are we discussing both of them? We can break them out and do them individually or we can do a, just a blanket motion to accept them as information. If there's anything that requires action, we can break it out. I'd like to speak to the Rosebud Motorsport one. Okay, we can start there if you'd like. Okay. So just, I mean, and everybody knows and Matt did a good job of putting a little package together for those of us that didn't have the background and shared it with everybody. Um, it's still a big issue to uh, to a lot of Division Six and Seven residents. Um, like I could make the argument that there's more people in that I've heard through our anecdotal county discussions. There's more people opposed to this motorsport than there are in favor of backyard hands, for example. I mean, it's that big an issue for that area. Understanding that there's not a lot we can do about it, but I would just also bring to your attention that um, the federal government is now looking at a proposed recovery strategy for bank swallows uh, and it would cover that entire um, area basically from Redland to Bainan which is Bainan is on the eastern edge of where this motorsport thing would be so I just wanted everybody to be aware of the fact that it's it's probably going to come up again I know it's been rejected once but it's not going to stop people from trying I believe the hearing for the environmental part was on hold till, and I think it's supposed to restart next month, about the 11th or 15th. Looks like they have to go through that process. 
for the federal government to go continue their process on the protection area. So, really, uh, I can't speak to why this person wrote the letter. All that I know is that uh, this person asked for all the information. They sent it to her. She is a biologist and she is. And, uh, council's heart to change their. Before the election, there was a presentation that, and an ask from the county that we would present a letter or an environmental impact assessment done the province's bidding. The province doesn't do it, they make the developer pay for it, but it's at guidelines for Alberta environment. Or to an area structure plan, I believe. And at any rate, the county at, uh, didn't vote for it and, and it didn't go through. I don't know if there's any change in sentiment about uh, sending a letter off. We still have time, being that it's middle of next month when they're meeting the Alberta Environment Public Hearing. What the word is, it's like being appealed or previous decision. I phoned Wendy briefly yesterday and she filled me in. I'm not the one that knows all the answers to this. <clears throat> Any other questions or discussion? Um, for me, I mean, I think from before when we talked about it a year and a half ago, or a year ago probably now, um, I think there was lots of opportunity for people to oppose this and it's like I said then and I'll say it now it's in another county He's, um, so my opinion hasn't changed and I have taken abuse over social media on that before just so you know which is fine um, I've got thick, thick skin but uh, yeah it's mine, mine hasn't changed I think for the two new councillors to know, if it does go through, it's right on the river, the Rosebud River, it separates us from from Nihil. It's right along the river. Of course, the river boundary is on Wheatland County too. It only has one part access in from Knee Hill, and they would have to fix that road up, which the county went 690, I believe they call it. We petitioned the provincial government, and we had a hearing, and we won that, that the road has to be built to particular standards, as it is supposed to be the only way in. There is other access from Wheatland County through Langlet Siding, and maybe you've been on Langlet Siding, I know what it's like. It washed out here three, four, five years ago. In one place we were missing 13 feet of dirt. A buried telephone cable was as high to the ceiling to the ground that used to be buried. That's how much dirt was gone. We put in a new culvert here before it was laying at the bottom of the ravine with no dirt around it, just like somebody rolled it off the truck. Very expensive road to build. Not the safest road, it's single traffic in some places. If that gets built, there's going to be a lot of pressure on that road, I'm sure. I don't know what we're going to do about it. Probably have to build it up, and there'll be no help from, from anybody. It's not in any agreement. Just so you're aware, that road could come back and haunt us. And if that thing gets built, it will be become an issue.
think being I don't know how long ago was our thing can we make a motion or is it within our bounds of limit statute to limitations so to say or? uh no so this one specifically I did take a look at through the procedural bylaw um just because I knew there would probably be a motion coming forward today so there's kind of two elements here that would apply so council definitely can vote on it today just because the previous motion occurred with the previous council um so it kind of resets that motion or if that isn't the case then the count or the council would have to wait one full year to redebate the same motion but they, they can do it today just because it's been it's been less than a year but it's a new uh new municipal council mm -hmm. Just a couple of things to note that I was taking into consideration when I was thinking about this is that the province did rule in December of 2021 on that request to do a comprehensive environmental impact assessment. And I think uh, the brief outlined that the province had deemed that that was not necessary uh, for this development. And the other thing, so that that's sort of my key consideration. I th almost think we're and administration happy to hear if I'm interpreting this incorrectly, but I would think that we're almost past the point of being able to weigh in on that because the province has um, made their decision. I think what we will all will be watching with interest is that um, hearing for May of 2022 that's scheduled regarding standing to include more appellants uh, to the 2020 appeal. I know the residents and adjacent landowners are um, watching that very carefully in the outcome of that as well. I do have um, a mixed position on this because I recognize the autonomy of Nihil County as uh, the planning, uh, having the jurisdiction over the planning. But at the same time, I recognize that there are those impacts to the adjacent landowners, many of which who are, as you already referenced, Division 6 and Division 7 residents and landowners and egg producers and um, just the the significance and the sensitivity of that area of the county that's adjacent to that development. So um, I don't think I personally would support a reconsideration of our previous position, even though I believe I was probably on the losing side, um, only because I think the province has made their decision. Um, I think we got to the middle of next month is when they're going to start the process again. I think it's a recess now is what I understood, the environmental impact appeal. I think it's a wetland appeal that they're going to be considering in May. The, the previous decision that we had been discussing was to wait, like to lend our support to the request for the, like the more full scale environmental impact, which I think the province. So it's being appealed that decision now. is the way I understood it. Okay, I might and, uh, not be understanding well that. Kind of by the area landholders, neighboring. I believe most of that valley now has got uh, fence on it, conservation easements. And I believe, I don't know if all of the landowners signed, but I believe just about all, if they haven't, signed uh, in agreement that land should be protected for the federal status for the fauna that's living there, namely the bank swallows and the peregrine falcons and the eagles and everything else. They've all signed those agreements. They're just waiting to go through on the process. All except one landowner, of course, is not so So I'm trying to follow along. Um, so there was a request for Alberta Environment to, for them to require an environmental impact assessment, and they said, no, it's not required. But then it says Nihil County indicated they had already completed an environmental impact assessment. Is that So the different? request was for a more fulsome oh. environmental impact. I, I don't know the right verbiage, but... Okay. Um, the county had required one as part of their planning process, and that was completed by the developer. I don't re a long, long time ago. This has been, well, as was outlined in the time, like the briefing. Yeah. 
Um, this was a request to do a more further in-depth one. Because the one that was done by Badlands was approved by Alberta Environment and Parks, so that doesn't, it still doesn't mean that another one couldn't be done, a more fulsome one. Is that what we're saying? Okay. I don't feel prepared to <laughs> vote on this right now, honestly. I don't, I feel like I need to understand it more. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's up to you to. I don't know if the study was so much approved is that it was accepted in the package. Oh. Yeah, it's Councillor Bigger makes a good point. Um, the letter was just in correspondence. If we did want to contemplate um, action, we could request that administration bring back a fulsome, we've got a fulsome briefing, but they could bring back an RFD if we give some direction, um, was sort of the relevant context for us to consider. I know I'm making more work for you. Councillor Larson and then Matt. Okay, just and I just want to make sure that we can do that based on what Brian had said earlier, where we have to debate and motion this, or we have to wait a year if we. As if long we as do we don't direction. pass a motion today, say a, say a motion was defeated today, you could not reconsider that for a year unless you can waive procedure. We have there is a clause in our procedure bylaw where you can relax the rules to reconsider something, but under normal procedure we could not reconsider immediately but if we're not considering it today if we're just accepting the correspondence as information you could still look at the issue um, with a motion at a future time so uh, Matt and I have been kind of chatting and we do recognize that it is quite an intricate file with a lot of information in it that spans mm -hmm. back multiple years mm -hmm. so we do think it would be advantageous to accept the correspondence's information, um, take this package that we provided electronically to council, just with all the historical um, pieces of this file, and review it. And if council chooses, council can make a motion at the next meeting or at a future meeting, whatever council. And okay. if you guys do have questions in yeah. leading up to that, definitely let us know or let all of council know, and we'll do our best to answer it. That's fair. Although I do feel that. Even the information that I've had on council uh, with it the whole time, we've only only heard one side ever about um, like we've only been presented with what the residents why they don't want it. I've never heard from Neil why it got approved. I, I don't know. I'm just because there is some residents that do want it, I, and I didn't know that before. There, I was approached that some people do want it. They've never been. We never got to do that because it's not our it's not our project, right? So it is complicated. Yeah, and I, I mean, there's obvious economic development opportunities for Nihil County, and it is a significant development for Nihil, fully respectful of their jurisdiction over that. Um, and I, too, have heard from residents who are supportive as well. Um, there's definitely diversity in perspectives around this, so it's a good point. The problem with that is it's not our debate to have. I know, because we don't, it's not our project, so we haven't heard the ins and the outs. We've only yeah. heard that one side, and that's but, where I feel... When I'm looking at the information Matt gave us here, it says a decision by the Director of Alberta Environment and Parks regarding a request from the Save Bud Rosebud, Rosebud Group for a mandatory, mandatory environmental impacted assessment. It was determined that it is not needed. We've already made the decision. That was how I understood it. And as I don't well. see anything about an appeal anywhere. So I, I don't. Is there an appeal going on? I don't know. So, uh, it, yeah, this is a real complex file. Um, a couple things to note. This was the latest information that Nihil staff gave us. In fact, so the the last two pages in in my timeline is the latest um, of that. With respect to an appeal, I'm not sure. All I'm aware of is um, the additional um, review with respect to um, hearing of concerns of stormwater and, and, and flow and management of that. Um, so that is what we have our eye on for May of 2022. Because if you note in the timeline, there were 25, 26 appellants and the, the, the panel kind of 
throughout most of the concerns because they recognized that there wasn't any adjacent um, or uh, I don't know how to word it, but concerns that really had weight to them. So they kept five of those uh, concerns on file. So that was the appeal that we are aware of. Uh, with respect to the recommendation of looking it over and um, reviewing it, digesting it, and kind of providing concerns or questions, please do. And then we can kind of take that back and, and let council know if there's a way forward or something that um, council can consider in terms of moving forward. As of right now, in my opinion, um, based on the environmental impact assessment at the provincial level, the decision from the director was made, but we can certainly, obviously, we'll do some background digging on any, any appeals or any kind of conversation in the background with respect to that decision of December 2021. Um, but I think it's important to note that it is a balancing act with respect to another county and obviously the adjacent concerns. The timeline provides substantial um, um, verbiage with respect to the referrals that happened in the past and concerns and presentations of previous councillors and um, all of that. So, you know, that history, there, there, there has been a lot of that kind of inter-municipal um, working relationship um, dynamics that did occur through the planning process. Um, but I couldn't, from a planning perspective, speak to the decisions on with respect to the development and the merits of the development uh, without kind of looking at a land file to your, your question, Councillor Bigger. But I mean, I trust the due diligence of a planning professional that was looking into it at the time. But yeah. That's in no way to stop the development. This is an environmental issue that we live on the other side of the stream of. Residents are concerned about the future of their valley. Flora and fauna. That's as well as a well, I'm good. Whatever information. I'm so is there an appetite from council for administration to bring back an RFD or is it something that we feel like what it personally I feel like they just had more time with the document they've already created honestly I, I just because we only got this yesterday really I I looked it over but I, I could use more time with it I think probably uh, all the information is there that is relevant uh, maybe upon further reading, we might have extra questions, but you know, I don't know that we should get them to go through a whole other process on it. That's my thoughts. I would, I would say we should accept it as information. Out. I would be, I, I wouldn't say they should do a lot of work, but there is that this federal stuff that I brought up. I can share with them because that, I mean, if I look at that map, that completely impacts this area. So I think that. In order for anybody to make a more fulsome decision, it wouldn't hurt to have them do some research on it. Whether they I, and I would leave it up to administration to decide if we need an RFD or if they just come back with an information thing that says, "Hey, you know what? We've reviewed this to the best of our ability. We don't think there's a decision to be made here." I think I think that's the prudent way forward here. But perhaps just an agenda item at our next council meeting. Or do you want to just raise it if you review the documentation and would like further action? I think that. I think just right, if somebody decide, reads more and finds out more and wants to bring it forward again, they will. Okay. Councillor Larson, do you feel it necessary to have further um, administrative work on the SARA, like the species at risk? work or do you have enough information on that? Well, I think I have some information on it, but I'm not sure everybody else does. So that's why I would say it would, it's probably worth to pass that information along to administration, let them have a look at it. Sure. If we need a motion for that, I'm happy to do that or we can just... Or if you just want to share it with that. council, then everybody can just review it. There is some, like there's public facing um, species at risk information. If you have beyond that, if you could share that and then we could all share it with administration as well, but then council can just review that. And then if we need administration to, or is there further work that you think is prudent now? 
Uh, well, I don't know for sure now, but I think okay. that there there certainly could be. That's why I thought maybe might be more value for have administration look to sure. see if there is more information that we need to have. Sounds good. Certainly, we can all do the homework if we want to, but I'm, I was more thinking that's a job they're better suited for than us. Okay. We should probably have a motion if there's going to be like action expected from administration. If you want to put a motion on the floor for that, and then we can do the bulk of the correspondence following that, yeah. just that because we're in this conversation. So I would I would move that administration uh, further review the uh, information on the Badland Motorsports with regard to any federal or um, existing appeals and at their discretion come back with us uh, with the information in the form of either an information report or a request for decision as they see fit. Don't ask me to repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> any questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Do we need one to accept these reports as well for information? Yes. The correspondence, yeah. Okay. I will move that we accept both reports as information. Uh, reports or, or correspondence? correspondence. Sorry. Okay, yep. Correspondence. I just started my computer again. Yep, no, that's perfect. So probably just a blanket one to accept yep. all three to uh, accept pieces all of the correspondence. correspondence and information items uh, presented. Perfect. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Now, did we want to? I don't feel like we need to respond to the 2024 Alberta Winter Games. Do we want to respond to the letter from Mayor Burke? And I believe, Councillor Larson, you already did respond to Ms. Shackleton regarding her correspondence. I know you acknowledged receipt. All, all I said to her was, thanks for the information. We'll be talking about it. I didn't make any promises or anything. Yep. So I don't think we need to follow up further with her at this point in time. Um, she is a professional agrologist, though, not an environmentalist, just so in case anybody wants to go check out who she is. Uh, I know uh, the Reeve of Nihil County did some checking on her, so it might be worth, uh, I can follow up or you can, doesn't matter, whatever we do. Okay. Um, because it was acknowledged, I think that that's good. We, she has got an acknowledgement that we have received her correspondence and we'll be receiving it publicly today. Yep. Do we feel the need to respond to Mayor Burke? We did respond to many of the concerns in the Wheatland Regional Partnership meeting but I'm at Council's will if we want to do a formal response to the correspondence. I would I, say no. Oops, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I would say no. I, I do think that we responded to his, his uh, concerns in that meeting. Deputy Reef Clausen. I was going to say the same thing, and in fact, in that letter, it says it was discussed in the meeting as well, so... Yeah, and I'll acknowledge just this is my own personal opinion. I, I do agree with Mayor Burke that we, the process probably could have been better in terms of communicating through it. Mm -hmm. The only thing I will note is because it was a very evidence-based sort of data-driven model that administration developed for the funding, that, that's not really conducive to negotiating per se mm -hmm. um, because just because of how the model was structured. Um, I think the model would actually lose validity if you got into sort of a back and forth or a negotiating um, position. So I completely agree. I think we could have done a better job at communicating and I'm personally committed to doing that going forward. I do value the partnerships that we have in this region. Um, but I did just want to note that this, this isn't necessarily something based on the model that administration worked so hard on that's really negotiable per se. So, and that's just personal perspective, so. So then if, if everyone's comfortable with that, I don't think we need any further action because we do, we have accepted uh, as information. We do have several closed session agenda items, so I will move us into closed session. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried.